Okay, I'm gonna just start in the beginning. You've got your black glue ready to go. I've got a lot of water on my brush, some yellow, and then I'm gonna smear it around fast. Remember that this is water color. More water, less paint, and I'm gonna push the color around on the edges, leaving a little bit of white as I go um, for a highlight. But notice I'm not dipping it back in the paint. I'm gonna leave that alone for right now. And I'm using more of the side of my brush because remember the paint and the water travels this way to the end of the paintbrush, so from here to here. So if my tip of my brush is not on the inside of the line and the chamber isn't, then it's gonna flow outside because to paint like this, it means the water's gonna go outside the line. Um, make sure that you're spreading the color around because remember the first color, first layer should be a light wash. See all this color? I'm pushing it out. Some of you try to outline the edge and you outline the edge. By the time you go back, it's all dry. No, you should be pushing the paint around using lots of water, but it shouldn't be like puddling. If it is, you're using a little bit too much. And if that happens, grab your paper towel, carefully dry your paintbrush, make sure it's back in a pencil point, and then just go back in there and see how it lifted that color up. It's almost like an eraser. So that will help you. So once that is dry, then you're going to be able to go in and start darkening the edges the second day. Or if you don't have a lot of time, you can go ahead and intensify the edge. And I've got several options. Either A, I could go orange and then red, which I could do. I could add a little bit of orange to my brush, dip it in the water a little bit so it's a little bit lighter, and I'm going to test it and the tray to make sure it's not super, super dark because I don't want to overpower it right away because if I get it too dark too soon, it's a little harder to take the color off. Now that it's wet, I've got a wet on wet technique and it's going to kind of travel on its own. I'm going to kind of just tap it here and just kind of let the color travel all on its own. The wet on wet, it'll start um, blending, bleeding, spreading, etc. that way. So now you can see I'm getting a little bit darker value here, and I don't want to overdo it. You just need to let it go, because sometimes with watercolor, you can still see a little bit of where the lines are. That's kind of the beauty of watercolor. Now, there's a shadow here because the, the arm is like tucked under a little bit, so I want to make that darker. So now while it's still wet, I'm going to touch and do dot, drops of red right there and let that shadow go see what happens. And I may think, wow, <clears throat> that's really red. I don't really want it quite that red. So another way to intensify the color, make it darker, is to take yellow's complementary color, which is violet, and mix it together. But because it's yellow, I want just a little bit of violet. Because if I use too much, it's gonna overpower. I just want a teeny tiny little drop. All right, and that's a good thing I didn't do that because I didn't do that right. I want you to get a different brush. That way you're not contaminating the colors. And I can put it on the tray. Yep, there we go. Now I've got some purple. Okay, just a little bit more. I'm going to set that brush aside. So you may need a couple brushes to work with. That's okay. Um, I've got plenty at this point now. And see how I'm mixing it together? And my yellow is looking like a, a way darker yellow. So now while that red is still wet, I'm gonna take the yellow and I'm gonna dab it also with this darker yellow that I just created. And I'm gonna let it go, I'm gonna see what happens. Cause then when I get to areas like this where I've built up layer, if I want this to go fast, use the hair dryer, make it go faster. If I feel like, oh man, it's not spreading as much as I want, you can go on there and kind of work over it just a little bit too. But the thing that you can't do is go paint, 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 because otherwise you are loosening up the fibers of the paper and it's gonna start looking kind of fuzzy. And if you keep doing that, you're gonna end up with a hole in your artwork. And I know that's not what you want. So fast drying it, you can use the hair dryer. And the reason we're doing the shading on here is to give it the illusion that it's three dimensional. You can make it completely different colors than it normally is, that's fine. But when you want to intensify the edges, you can use complementary colors. I had a lot of questions about brown. How do I make brown darker? 
Well, all the complementary colors, if you put equal amounts together, it's going to turn kind of a, a brown. So I'm going to add some blue to this to make it a little bit darker. So now I've got blue because I rinsed my brush out. And now that is brown, but it still has too much of a blue tint to it. So I'm going to hold on to that brush. And I'm going to get some more with a clean brush here. I'm going to get some more brown. And I'm going to add that to my palette. And the nice thing about this palette is you can mix it to the color that you need and want. There you go. So now I've got a really nice like chocolate brown, which will work great. I've had questions asked, how do I make gray? Well, lots of water and a tiny bit of black. See, that's black. I need it to be way lighter. So I've got to have a lot of water. See, there we go. Now I've got gray. And I can test it on paper if I need to. I'm going to put that down so you can see the paper. But if you need to, you can test it on that practice sheet that you should have. Okay, that's gray. That works. And if I needed to use gray somewhere, I could. Or if I needed to use a darker brown. But you can darken every color. I've had some students say, well, what do I do with, if I want it black? And I want the black to look a little different. Add a little bit of violet. Add a little bit of blue. And it'll give you at least a different um, light to dark effect. That will happen but again obviously you've got your color palette yellow if you go orange it's gonna look darker yellow you can go green it'll look you know darker as well just depends on which range you want or if you want to really make that color richer and darker you can um, add its complementary color like I did here with um, the yellow really quickly I'm going to show you with red if you were to do red put the brush down for a second and green, just a little bit of green, you're gonna end up with a maroon or mahogany type color. So that works as well. There you go.